Hello. Um, okay, microphone's still loud enough, so it is not broken again. That's good. Okay. Um, I did look into the problem yesterday a bit, so... I knew what was going wrong, and I'll just show you. There's a new problem, though. Um, the problem was that I have this normalization here, right? So without the normalization, and this is how the graph looks like, with the four difficulties and then up to 60, because we integrate over the original data here. Um, and then I, then I normalize it. And then I have the scale that I want. So the problem before was that I didn't normalize the results and therefore everything that I calculated was in this scale. So when I wanted to reach the point 0 0.4, which would have been here, I actually was, um, I should pull it over here, right? Yeah, uh, when I, <laughs> sorry, I was using the mouse in the upper right corner. Um, when I was was um, trying to reach this point here, I actually reached like some point here, where you're at like um, 0 0.4 in this scale. So I messed up the normalization. And then afterwards I did the, uh, when I added the normalization, it worked. So for example, if we now have um, the position, position 0 0.1, which would be somewhere here we uh <clears throat> sorry somewhere here we get the 1.3 or 1.4 and then for something that is nearly in the in the corner here the 0 2 will be 2 which also fits and then this is due to rounding that it's not exactly the same because i only have such um such low resolution um Where do I put it? Put it here, maybe? Um, so I edit that normalization step um, here. Um, so I sample the points, I then feed them through the normalization and then see if the result after normalization is um, still smaller than my point that I reach and by that get closer and closer to the point. Um, I also added that afterwards I check if the last value is um, closer to the wanted y value than the current one and pick based on that so that um, you know that I pick the better point and not um the one always after it um the problem now is though that this is super slow everything and i added some checkpoint output stuff um somewhere here uh so if you look at that and just reload the site We'll see that like the first time this rises is fine because it's the sampling. So we get that, that's okay. Um, this is only happening if we don't return the cached points, but rather calculate stuff. And my, like I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like because I'm running into this and that over and over, I guess that, um, which also makes sense because these are just like also the, where is it? The lookup tables are just in this class, right? So whenever I recreate the section, um, these, um, these functions, uh, these members will be recreated. So with the way that React works, this is a nice idea, but as so much seems to be recreated all the time, um, this does not actually cache. At, at least that's my prediction on why. Um, 
it is just slow in general though so i could just improve also this method and do like um i don't know what the the name for it is but where you basically split your interval in half and always check which is um bit better and then get closer and closer to the point where you want to go so that i also could do uh, i could also instead of getting the point directly um, re-implement this um, thing where I um, slowly add the adding of the sections over and over and over and by that I, I have that only once where here I um, I do that every every single time so I do all this summing up um, for each individual point um, over and over and over so i'm not sure what i want to do here but definitely i should look into if my classes get destroyed over and over um so i should maybe also add something in the constructor because currently like the whole time till the last message came here is what it takes for this site to load which is way too slow um, for such simple uh, computations. But then again, I didn't care about efficiency at all in the beginning, so no wonder. Um, okay, maybe what we also could do is get one higher with this one. But, but I feel like that's too unprecise in my opinion, because this would be 1%, right? And then we only had a re resolution of 10 steps per um, smallest expected unit. Um, which is like kind of true, but then if we have, um, like we have here, uh, I should open it a second time when this is done. Like we have here uh, in the upper upper thing, this goes from 0 to 25, right? To sample that, I don't need to go such deep and do like 0 point something steps. For this one, I should. So my sampling rate should be adjusted to the values that I want to plot. Um, Which basically means that with a section, I should do this somehow dynamically for the section and have the resolution for that or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, let's put that one down. That should make everything way quicker. Um... And let's get some tea. What do I want to do? Oh yeah, I want to check if the constructor is called over and over. Um, section created. <clears throat> and then oh yeah also i think we won't make any real progress today it will just be um just be trying to get the, the things a little more efficient because i think we have everything now that we need in preparation to actually do stuff so i want to have a bit more efficiency before i go on um i should do this here no, in the end, after all the things are done, so I don't get potential crashes. Um, okay, so what can I already do here now? The thing is, though, no, this is the wrong point for it. This is just the graph, right? Yeah, section graph. Okay. Um, I don't need any information here other than create it. Um, do I not have a constructor? Oh, I have. Here it is. Okay. Um, 
section. No, come on. Okay, section created. Uh, I, I do have food also today, but I don't know if I want to eat because I kind of feel like I want to make progress. I can eat afterwards, but then it looks quite tasty. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What do I want to output here? It would, would be helpful to see if those, those um, sections that, that get created are all the same. But I don't know how to do that. I can't identify them. I mean, I could plot all the points. Yeah, maybe that's that's enough. That that should be enough. If I just do X and Y, uh, start X. I think even start X and Y should be enough to identify them. Um. Something like this. Hmm, that's interesting. So it's not the creation process. Oh yeah, which makes sense because in the app, I create them once. Right? Here, I create the difficulty graph once. Then it is created and it does no longer change, so we don't create new sections ever. Yeah, and that's, that is all, actually the case. Which makes me wonder why, um, can we reload the entire thing so I only get those? Yeah. Um, so we create the sections. And then here we create them again. Um, so everything after is duplicated. Potentially, everything before is not. We should also output when we are not caching, so we have a comparison on how much is cached and how much is not. This is what I want to prevent. This recreating here should not happen, so I need to put this stuff in a store or, or create it um, somehow globally. I, I forgot how to do that with React, so we need to check that out. So that will definitely help with the later section. Um, but then I also need to look what's... Um, why why so much is not cached hi hack hunter nice to see you um look at this dude coding and shit i should have kept coding after high school but i became a musician oh i don't know being a musician is so cool too i like the only reason why i wouldn't want to switch is because i have like i think better financial chances right but other than that, I, I don't know, music is so great. It's like one of the things on my to-do list that I need to do at some point more again. Like, have a band, write songs, all of that. It's just, I don't know. I, I think you have a really, really cool job. You should do music streams, maybe. I would watch that. Um, but yeah, other than that, how are you doing? You're having a great day. Uh, I hope so, at least. Um, and then also it's never too late to start with coding again, you know, just in case you want to, it's possible. Um, that's exactly the point I was getting at better functional security. Oh yeah, I, I get that. But then, I mean, if, if it doesn't fit for you, I, I feel like financial security is good and important and all of that. But if you are unhappy with doing it all day, I don't know if it's worth it in the end. Mm. But yeah, like fi financial, let's put it that way. I think financial insecurity is one of the worst things and can inflict so much stress that um, doing something that is less fun is worth it. But in general, I, I would always prefer less money and more um, more happiness. 
as long as it's in the boundaries of um, things that will still work out. But yeah. Um, okay, what did I want to do? Oh yeah, I wanted to check. Um, check um, how to add a destructor. Um, in TypeScript. I wonder if I can just um, edit without problem. Okay, I can do. Then let's just lock the destruction. Oh, we don't do no longer need to do that because we now know that we have two times creation. So that's all good. Interesting. So all of this is for the first sampling, right? Till the graph is uh, created. This is just so that um, just so that we can evaluate, right? It's the setup in the end here. Um, for the normalization to, for us to know the normalization scale, we do need to do the full integral, know what um, value we have there, and then we can use that for um, scaling, which means that we do the whole sampling once, and it should all be cached afterwards. And that does look kind of like it uh, works because these sample points um, are only like 82 more points that are um, created and the rest is still cached. And then only for interpolation, more points are there. Mm, okay. Let me turn the record and then we continue here. Um, Hack Hunter, do you need like introduction what I'm doing here or is that kind of understandable? Like in sense of what my goals are right now, I'm not sure if I could even bring it to a point where, you know, it would be understandable, but basically I'm just trying to get some efficiency into this and um, then afterwards be able to continue with cooler stuff. Um, but for that, I first, of course, need to find out where the inefficiencies lie and then fix those. Um, oh yeah, this is also, I create everything again if a single point, um, is missing. Where I could just, um create that point and not everything. But I mean only 82 are recreations here. Oh, I also don't know how big the area is though. That's an interesting information too. Um, not cached. So let's add those outputs to um, length. Yeah, okay. And what is this? Oh, this is single singular, right? And I do have that, but that calls the sample integration. Okay, because like also the this um, that's interesting actually these sampling points here would also trigger um would also trigger this so if we start here in the interpolation section um where we have like not cached entries um we don't get the sampling entries Which basically means that we have everything sampled there and that does work. 
Um... Yeah, and it does work. Um... So that actually is okay, I guess. Though the lookups, of course, might also take some time. Um, but okay, so that's possible more items. That's exactly one item always. Um, okay. And then I don't need the destruction. What I wanted to add was the the other option when I go and have everything cached. Um, so this. And then the same here. Okay, uh, let's do that. Also interesting if maybe I, I reduced the um, accuracy right now. And maybe that's already enough, but I, I really think I should make the um, the sampling dynamic. Um, this should depend on the um, width of the section, maybe height and be a, an amount of um, sample points rather than a resolution, which basically means that if I go from one to five, I maybe always want a thousand sampling points. Mm. And then I spread them equally. The thing is though, if I go from, I don't know, 0 0.01 in theory to five, I maybe rather, I, I could also do um, alternatively. Alternatively. Um, I could also go and say like the smallest number that I have I take that one and then like go uh, two scales um, lower. So if like my values are 0 0.1, 1, I don't know, something like that. I could go and say I multiply this with 0 0.01. So I get my sampling accuracy of this. And then if I would not have that point, I would go to this and if I like wouldn't have that one it would be something like that but if then the last values are way too high would they which they could in theory um this rate would break everything um the problem is though if I don't do it like that um and I have it like this and just take the smallest and biggest value and then this would be if I differentiate differentiate subtract them. Um, if I if I do it like that, um, and have this, and now say I want a thousand sampling points always, so I divide that by a um, thousand. Then, uh, sorry, don't not divide that. Um, I mean, kind of like, like I want the, this resolution rate, right? Is if I have that, um, wherever it is, I basically, um, add that to have the steps. So when I'm, um, come on, remove the analytics tool. Yeah, it needs definitely needs um, optimization. <laughs> what is this? Uh, come on, come on, load, please, please, please go. Anyway, 
I have the steps that I need for the same thing, right? If I want to um, want to do interpolation or uh, want to do the integral, um, I have a resolution of steps. So basically, here I I create how many sample steps I want, and then go through it and sum up. Uh, which means that. I start at zero, then I go at zero one, uh, then at zero two, three, four, five, for as long as this value would be <clears throat> zero point one. So if I now have this as my width of the um, points, like from start to end, and I divide it by the thousand sample points that I want, I would have two point a uh, one one point. 2898 as my sampling rate, right? And then would add one, like the first would be zero, the second would be this, the third point that I sample would be that, times three, times four, five, and so on. Um, so that means that I will never sample, like I will start with, with 0 0.1, and then the next thing I even sample would be 1.29 so all the things between this and that will not be sampled at all which is crazy because if i go from this to that maybe linear and then afterwards i don't know constant this linearity wouldn't even be there but then maybe I would consider this an user failure to input it like that. Hmm. But yeah, alternative is um, <clears throat> scale down with the, the zero dot zero one um from the smallest value um or maybe i just um let the user set the sample rate um Oh, I did go down there again, right? That's why we're so slow. Zero, zero, one. Uh, I did not. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, let's see the, let's see the, um, the results of our, um, locks and then think about what we could do here. Do I use this sampling rate for the sample points or only for the interpolation? Okay, only for the interpolation. Okay, and but this is also just accuracy. It it is not that important. Um, I think compared to other stuff. Hmm. I could just make it an input parameter also for this method. Uh, and not like a fixed parameter, because depending on the X that I pick, it wouldn't be the same anyway, right? So if I go the 0 0.1 steps here, no, they will always be the same. So they will be cached. If I go from zero to 0 0.4 or zero to, I don't know, 
0.6 this will cache all the values between 0 and 0 0.4 and for the 0 0.6 i don't do no longer need to do that and can just pick the cached values um because the steps will always be the same from zero to the other uh, value um oh but the case is that only if the x value is exactly the same i do the interpolation caching which is fine Yeah, I could do some optimizations here, which like would be something like if my value is not cached, I check if what the next nearest um, cache entry is and take that one. So if my number is really weird, like I don't know, 0 0.28 or something, I know that the closest cached point because of my sample rate would be um, like if i have something like this i know that if my sample resolution um that we have here is that i know that in my cache the value um the value this value will exist in the cache because it's Because this I can never create. Wait, how do how does my algorithm work with the end here? X is where we want to go. This is the end. These are the points that we want to have. Oh, it works because we just go through the points there. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah, so we could just pick that one if um, this is the end, where what we would do now is um, recreate because this value is not cached, but uh, this value is not cached, only that one. So we would um, sample everything again if we get this one, which would be true for anything that we get in that is below our sampling rate. Um, Does it do anything? Why is it so, so slow now? Because of the output that we get? I'm not sure. Let's stop it there. Um, okay. I'm definitely a bit lost where to start optimizing. But I still think that the first import, most important is don't duplicate. So this thing should not be created every time the app is created. Definitely not. It should be stored safely to be reused. And that would, will be what we need to do. I think we'll try doing that. And the rest will just be information for the next time. And then I can think off stream about where and what to fix. Um, okay, we have all the warning stuff now. So let's stop this once and restart. And then just wait. Oh, not just wait, wait with this on. I'm not sure if it's actually the output that will slow this down so much or if I messed up something else. I don't think I have source control here yet. No, I don't, which is stupid, really, really stupid. Not seeing what changes one, one have made is just bullshit. I need to set that up uh, after stream, I think. Um, hmm. 
No, I think I only added more output. Let's reduce the resolution though to see a better comparison. Oh, did I? I'm not sure. Um, where is it? Here. Okay. Let's do that. Um, stop this. Okay, let's let's stop it again and restart. <clears throat> what? I must have broken something. It shouldn't be that slow. But maybe it is. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, that's a lot of output. Uh, let's see. Um, one not cached interpolation. One not cached interpolation. Wait, why do, why do we get those now? <clears throat> I think it wasn't the case before. Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was one interpolation and then this number was just way bigger and I misinterpreted, misinterpreted it, uh, it right now. Um, okay, so that makes all sense. And then afterwards, all our samples are cached here. Which means, but what this means is that we, like for, for where sample points, we actually check every single one again. Um, sample points. Yeah, so when we get them from the graph, we definitely, um, we definitely try or get all the points individually. Which somehow is fine, I guess. Um, oh, the record is through. Let me switch it. Now, let me turn it because it's not so much more time. Um, okay, so we have our sampling points here. Um, and there are some in between that are not cached. And it's always one, so it isn't the worst. Which is interesting though, because these 100 points, in theory, I could input to the other algorithm once. And... If I input them once, I would expect that to be way faster. So let me check that once. We have this. And this has points. Okay, and I go through this individually. Is there no way to get the points once and then sum up? That would be way faster, no? Um, So for this x, okay, I check if it's in the section or not, and then sample it. 
but I could also iterate through this array once until the criterion is met, then sample them all together. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure if that will make things way quick or not, but that's definitely an option. Because in the um in the main uh, method, I give this into a library, and the library is built to have uh, arrays. So I would assume that if I don't give an arrays, uh, like I call this over and over, and I would expect this to be slow. So instead of calling this over and over, I could just call this with a hundred numbers once, and that should be way quicker. Um, so other than, like like that's definitely something where I should uh, time stuff. Um, but we're first looking for where problems lie. I should note that somewhere. Let's just note it here. No, here. Um, so first thing, um, the diff graph needs to be outside of the app um, in a permanent storage uh, to not lose our lookup tables. Yeah, that's definitely the first thing we will do. And then um, we need to time um, the how's it called um, we need to time the section uh, sample points method to see if it is as inefficient I have no idea how to write that word Inefficient? Okay. As inefficient um, as I think um, to sample single uh, points points uh, instead of entire arrays. Um, that would be the next thing. Um, and then this is actually a point here, um, the sample rate okay, either that alternatively that or this um okay let's go through this more i think we'll just go through this list and see if some of i spot some things that are interesting and then next time we'll do into uh, Im improvements or maybe i do some improvements off stream i don't know how much fun this is um to do on stream um but yeah um okay so we have some setup here that's fine i expect that if i would do these uh, 300 points all together instead of individually um why did it just go white okay uh, if i would do them individually um what is going on here why is it so slow now just give me the output wait why why is there i don't have any breakpoints here why did it break oh i have one here okay yeah, we're definitely in need of um, 
more efficiency. I guess we're waiting again. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. We have that. We have this with the not cached in between. Um, that is after sampling points, right? Yeah, after sampling points. We have some cached, some not cached, but the batches that are cached are huge. So that should still give efficiency because these 100, the first ones, we would just get immediately. The next batch we would also get in one block and not have all the individual switches. Um, okay. Normalization doesn't need anything, that makes sense. Uh, sample integral, integral points. Um, nothing is cached here, which is, which makes sense because we only cached one value, the full value. But the sampling is cached, like all the sampling here is cached, I guess. Mm, okay. Yeah, all these sampling points, we we do get them out of the um <clears throat> out of the lookup table though. So we have like you see this this number rising. To to do this interpolation the way I do it here, I I get all the samples every single time um, and not create that in a batch. So I check 70 things and then I check 71, but 70 things in these 71 are exactly the same, exactly the same. So I don't know if that's like a problem. I should time that too. Though it's kind of the same thing, right? If I just get all these 70 points once together and then, um, then it might be efficient enough. And then like also only, yeah, that's also a thing. Only, um, um, only, Um, create, no, only, only calculate the points that are actually missing. Um, in this method, because currently if I would now switch to batches, uh, like arrays um, of points, and one thing is missing, I would recreate everything, which in this case wouldn't help because possibly the 71 is uh, missing and then I get the next. Though here, like everything is cached, right? So I could just, I will just get all the cache results at this point anyway, I think. I mean, this is true, but I'm not sure if it helps in this moment. No, I press save, so it will ruin our output again. Um, yeah, these are all cached already, so I get all the points are cached. Yeah, I also need to time if this um, is inefficient. 
Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, time if this is in a vision. Okay. Um, yeah, we go through all this. Um, no, yeah, now that it's running again, it ruins my scroll position. Ha. <sighs> Mm-hmm. And it's broken again. Oh my god, I hate this so much. Now I wished I had would have thought about the efficiency efficiency before, but you know, usually it's oh I could just no, you know what we do? We reduce the time even more, uh, the, the resolution even more, so we just get quick results because only the um the relation between these numbers matter, not how many there are. So let's do this very low res. Um, save this, stop this again, start this again. Okay, because I only have like five more minutes and I want to at least get through the list. So let's reload once, get all the results. Yeah, we have this, we have the sampling. Then we have this rising number here, which is interesting here because we have more interpolation points and sometimes it's the same number of sampling points because, you know, we have the steps. So for these three interpolation points, it will be the same value because of the way it works. Um, but yeah, okay, we're done here. We have lot of lots of cached stuff again. Okay, so there is a lot of cached uh, things in between. Um, but this is barely readable, right? So what I also need to do next time or before the next time would be um, not only time things, um, but um, count correctly uh, without spamming the output um, so basically I want to know how often do I get a cached hit how often do I get a non-cached hit and then in the end output these values um, rather than you know trying to read through this and not getting all the details um, Because where I want to go next would be, uh, where is it? Um, I would want to see test points and what is happening after it, before the after output. This is also very interesting to me. I can't do that now though, because, um, you know, I, I can't find this. Um, I'm not sure if I can actually search in here. Uh, after test points, huh? <laughs> Damn it. Um, can I search like this? Oh, I can. Nice. Okay. Um, the sampling before again has just this writhing value, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have like 29, 28, 27, all these values that are cached and we are getting them. And then it even has like some cached interpolations in between, which is great. And then after test points, this is our new newest thing, right? That's what's evaluating and giving us this values, which was we roll a random number between zero and one, pick that number, and then look at the output. Oh, also, maybe that's interesting to see. Um, you see how no longer smooth this is? This is because I reduced the sampling rate so much that it would be quicker. 
if you recall how smooth it was before. Okay, so we are at test points now. And this will be interpolation. Um, and the thing is, are there a lot cached things or are there way more non-cached things? And this looks like this is cached, cached, cached. But again, I, I definitely need the better output and not look at it like this. But here is a lot of cached. I wonder why these lines are not combined like this one. I don't know where the difference is. Maybe there's too much time between them. Okay, but there is a lot of caching. That is good. Um, but that also means that we have problems elsewhere with being slow. Yo, this all is cached. That's great. And then these aren't too many sampling points needed. Okay. Um, and then this is already the second run, right? Yeah, we create the new section. I'm not sure why this is um, in a less bright color, but yeah, this is the second time we go through all this. Mm. Okay, well, that's some intel. So we have a plan now what to do next, which is this, the plan to be faster. Okay, um, <clears throat> let me, already before I forget that next time, uh, remove some, of these things, but also add a to-do. Um, continue here, because that will be the next thing, I think, to time that. Um, this one, oh, not to time, to time and count. So I want these outputs, but not in a weird way of outputting that to the console, but actually get the information I need. Um, okay, so we time those two. The rest can be can stay. I think they don't don't matter too much. Um, let's see if we reload now. We for some reason have <laughs> wake points. I don't know why. Yeah, this is like this is fine. All these informations are great to have. And then I think oh yeah, I should also time these. Um, so let's add that here too. Um, uh, time the main sections of the app, the current main sections of the app. Needed to restart the music. Did it work? Did work it did okay with that we now have a plan i'll read through it and then i'll end quickly and uh, start working um in the sense of like work that gives me money uh okay so what we did is we analyzed the app today and like looked at what problems there are why this is so damn slow um I fixed the, the calculations before for the task that we had last time. So we now have everything we need in the sense of um, like math stuff. We can now use this uh, shit to place the, um, place the squares, right? So I now have everything that I need to calculate what square should go where um, by using the, the things that we now built. Um, which would be one major next step. Before I can do that though, I need to be more efficient because if I up the um, quality to not have these, oh, to not have these, um, to have the, this really smooth and not wait forever, I need to be way more efficient. So um, these, 
I should I should drag it over and not just with a small cursor on the other monitor show things. Um, yeah, so that's basically the ta task of today to find out what is inefficient. And I now have like ideas what is inefficient and we'll need to time them and better output um, the inef inefficiencies. Um, but yeah, major thing will be putting this in a store that is um, uh, fixed and not recreated every time the app is created so we don't lose our um, lookup tables and caches in this and don't need to recalculate everything. Um, and then we basically just need to look a bit deeper into what is slow here. And most likely the biggest improvement will be that with these calls to the external library, which is Evapolate, um, they should be array-wise and not individual points. Um, so I think that will be a huge improvement. Um, but we will time that before I start changing things. And then there are little things like... Um, we, if not everything is cached, create everything again. So those things could also be optimized. Um, yeah, and then I need to check if I can calculate the sampling rate any better and not waste so much um, processing on if I have like the steps 5, 10, 20, I don't need to have a sampling rate of 0 0.1 and have thousands of steps uh, that's just wasted. Um, yeah, so I think that will be the next step. Maybe I do some of that off stream. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, maybe if I feel like doing it this evening, but don't feel like streaming, I, I do that off stream. Um, but yeah, that basically was it. Um, I'll already switch to the end screen now. Um, here. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching. It was a lot of fun. Um, even though I didn't get any progress today, I feel like. Um, but it still was... Uh, was nice to like think through these stuff and look where it goes uh, but yeah with that thanks for watching uh, i need to run to work so or not run just switch to work computer things um and with that uh, i'll be back tomorrow i guess um probably with more coding so, yeah, I guess that's it. Bye.